Hello, today is Tuesday, April 19th uh, of 2022. My name is Sonora Cantu, and I'm interviewing Elizabeth Zamora for the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University, Kingsville. This is part of the Voices of a Pandemic Oral History Project in partnership with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Please know, um, Mrs. Mrs. Zamora, that this recorded interview will be placed in the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University, Kingsville, and shared with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. If there is anything you don't, do not wish to answer or talk about, especially given that your recording may appear online, I will honor your wishes. Um, and also, if there is something you want to talk about, please bring it up and we'll talk about it. Because you're not conduct conducting this interview in person, I need to record your consent you consenting. So I'll ask you a series of six questions. Please say yes, I agree, or no, I do not agree after each one. There are four questions we need to make sure you agree to before we go on. South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University Kingsville wishes to uh, archive your interview along with any other photographs and other documentation at the South Texas Archives of, South, of Texas A&M University Kingsville. We will retain copyright of the interview and any other materials you donate to the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University Kingsville. Um, question number one, do you give us consent to archive your interview and your materials at the Jernigan Library at Texas A&M University Kingsville? I do. All right. Number two, do you grant South Texas Archives at the Jernigan Library at Texas A&M University Kingsville copyright over the interview and any material you provide? I do. Number three, do you agree to allow South Texas Archives at the Jernigan Library at Texas A&M University Kingsville to post this interview on the internet where it may be viewed by people around the world? Uh. I agree. And number four, do you grant South Texas Archives of the Jernigan Library at Texas A&M University Kingsville consent to share your interview and your materials with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin for inclusion in the Voices of a Pandemic Oral History Project, which will include posting the interview on the internet? Uh, I do. All right. We have many questions in a pre-interview form that we have already filled out. We use that information from the pre-interview form to help in research. The entire form is kept in a secure Voices server at the University of Texas at Austin. The final storing of the pre-interview form will be at the South Texas Archives of the Jernigan Library at Texas A&M University Kingsville. We have stripped all, we will have stripped out any contact information for yourself or family members so that we, so that will not be part of your public file. Your public file will only be accessible at the Jernigan Library. And going on to question five, do you wish for us to share the rest of your interview in your public file available to researchers at the South Texas Archives at the Jernigan Library at Texas A&M University, Kingsville? Um, is that question five? Yes. Uh, no. All right. Uh, and then number six, on occasion, Voices re receives requests from journalists who wish to con contact or interview subjects. We only deal with legitimate news outlets. Do you give consent for us to share your phone numbers or your email, email with journalists? No. All right, and now we're going to begin the interview. Okay. Firstly, um, Tell me a little bit about your experience with COVID-19. Um, well, my experience with COVID-19 was very rough. Um, money was tight. You know, um, not a lot of supplies were available at stores. People were hectic. And as far as my mental health, I feel like COVID really impacted that. Would you say living at South Padre sort of worsened um, the impact of COVID-19? For sure, for sure. Prices are already so high, you know, for rent and, you know, all the apartments are turning into, you know, condos and all that eventually people are getting pushed out. How would 
you say um, you initially reacted to the information of COVID-19 all the way back in 2019? Um, in 2019, I honestly didn't even know COVID was a thing until like late 2019. I honestly didn't even know it was a thing. Sorry. Oh no, I'm going to continue. How would you say, um, like you said you didn't know about it until late 2019, so when would you, where would you say you first learned about it? Um, like, uh, like videos that friends started sharing and the news coverage and, um, you know, the school, school projects. That's when I really started to realize that, oh my God, this is really bad. Initially, when you heard about it, did you, did you ever expect it to get as bad as it did? Like, did you just think it'd be a few cases and go away? Or did you have like a feeling it, it would have gone bad? Honestly, I was expecting more from our government and uh, us handling it better. But it, it just ended up being so many cases. Even I got it, you know? And luckily I got over it. Along with yourself, do you know, have any of your other family members got it? Like, how has their experience been? Well, it was very, like, it wasn't as bad, luckily, but one of my brothers uh, couldn't breathe that well. He, he'd, like, cough and this and that. With me, it was more like I couldn't smell, taste, and... Um, It lasted for a bit. When you when you guys got COVID, did it ever like give you any sort of medical scare? Like, oh, you had to maybe the the lingering question of, oh, do I have to go to the emergency room? Luckily, no, it hasn't gotten, it, it wasn't that bad, luckily. How would you compare your life before and after COVID? Um, before? Before, I feel like I was a bit more social. You know, I started uh, getting out of my shell slowly, but sure. And um, once COVID hit, you know, I feel like I went back into that, you know, social anxiety, you know. And it's kind of hard for me to get back into that zone. Would you say that um, that COVID has impacted any sorts of um, relationships you were building? Um, yeah, for sure. Like my friends um, from school, you know, the ones that I would always hang out with, you know, I haven't really communicated with them at all. And I... Uh, You know, it's kind of hard to get back into that groove again, too. To get back to normal living, I guess. Along with um, friends, would how do you think um, COVID has impacted your 
relationship with your family, like if it has changed at all. Can you repeat that? Would you say COVID has also impacted your familial relationships? Um, not as much. Surprisingly, if anything, I'm spending more time with my family. Would you consider yourself um, lucky to be in the sort of like situation that you are at least to have your family with you? Because I do know that yes. with COVID, yeah, with COVID uh, many other Latinos are unable to meet as often with their family. Yeah, honestly, as where I stand, I feel like I am, you know, fortunate enough to still have my family, even though they all got COVID. And, you know, to be alive. I know you um, mentioned your your mental health status um, a bit ago. Uh, have you been, has COVID been, how do I say this, hang on. Can you repeat that? Oh, sorry, I'm um, formulating the question. Okay. Um, I recall you mentioning your mental health, and I wanted to ask, has COVID changed the way you look at it and, like, its services? Um, can you repeat that question again? Sorry. Um, has COVID in any way changed the way you look at mental health and its services? Uh, not really. Now I would like to ask um, some questions about South Padre and COVID's um, impact on it. In your perspective, how has COVID affected South Padre? The visitors, for sure. Because it's a tourist, you know, town. Going back to 2019, back when COVID started making its way to uh, uh, South Padre, South Padre, how would you? How was your reaction to spring break that year? Like to the fact that there was like barely anybody that came? I was honestly surprised, very surprised. But it was kind of expected. When you say expected, what do you mean? Can you repeat that? You kind of cut off. When you say expected, what do you mean? 
I mean, COVID was bad at that time. You know, I figured it out and, um, you know, I don't think a lot of people are willing to get sick, especially to something new. With that in mind, how would you, what do you think about how, um, the way people, people's perspectives sort of, or at least agency sort of shift um, in late 2020 when um, some people rebelled against either mask mandates or um, shutdowns or lockdowns? How did I react to them reacting that way? Yes. Um, honestly, I was like, just put on the damn mask. It's not that hard. You know? People don't want to get sick. And it's just the right thing to do. But their meltdowns are Sorry, could you repeat that the wind is sort of muffling your audio? Yeah. Um, essentially, it's not that hard to put on the damn mask, you know? And as far as uh, the people throwing like a temper tantrum over uh, the mask mandate and all that curfew, I mean, just deal with it. I mean, we all have to do it. 